Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Wilfer Svart coffee grinder. This grinder has been available for a good few years now, lots of people supply it, it's a very accessible grinder and it's a very inexpensive grinder too, you usually pay just under 100 quid for it. A fellow coffee botherer recently emailed me to say she was buying an espresso grinder to pair with an espresso machine she paid about £800 for. She had a fairly good budget available for the grinder and was thinking about buying a grinder which would work for both espresso and manual brew methods such as filter and aeropress. What I responded is that what I'd recommend is buying two grinders, one espresso capable grinder purely for grinding for espresso and another lower cost grinder purely for manual brew methods. And one suggestion for this was the Wilfer Svart. The reason I suggested this is that the better higher end espresso grinders usually have stepless adjustment for super fine grind adjustment. So using a grinder like this for both espresso and brew methods requiring a much more coarse grind doesn't really make sense. When you've dialed in for espresso, you don't really wanna be going way out of that grind range and then having to dial back in every time. And in my opinion, unless you're at competing barista level, both in terms of your abilities and your palate, when it comes to manual brew methods, something like the Wilfer Spa is gonna be absolutely fine in terms of grind quality for most people. You're not gonna get the same particle uniformity with this sub 100 pound grinder that you would if you invested several times the cost. But I think the majority of people aren't gonna have a sensitive enough palate to detect the difference in a cup of filter coffee, Aeropress or cafetiere coffee made with this grinder or a much more expensive grinder. But I will test this in a future video. I'm gonna do some blind taste testing using several different grinders for manual brew methods. So the Wilfer Svart is a grinder designed specifically for manual brew methods. It has 40 mil conical steel burrs and it has 15 grind settings. It's a timer grinder, but it's also on demand. It's become quite a popular grinder and if you spend some time researching, you'll find that overall its owners tend to be really positive about this grinder. So to start off with the good stuff. For under 100 quid, this feels like a well-made grinder. I'm surprised by the build quality for the price. It has a timer, but it's also an on-demand grinder. You can just press a button to start and press it again to stop, which I like. I'd usually single dose for manual brew methods, so I'd weigh the beans, chuck them in the hopper, and just stop the grind when all the beans are ground. It has a high torque motor, which is something it shares with much more expensive grinders, such as a Niche Zero. And the benefits of this is that the speed of the motor is converted into torque or power. So it has the power to grind through lighter roasted beans, which are harder to grind than the more brittle, darker roast beans. It has very low grind retention, which means how much of the coffee you grind remains in the grinder. This has been measured independently to be around 0.2 to 0.5 grams, which is incredibly low. The adjustment is very simple. You just move the hopper and it's easy to know where to adjust the grinder for each brew method. Although you probably want to experiment with the grind settings to get the best results with the brew methods that you're using. It's easy to clean, you can just remove the hopper and it's easy to remove the top burr to clean that too. It's very simple to use and for the price, I'm really impressed. I think overall it's very good value for money. So the negatives, there aren't any really. I've read some negatives about static in the grinds container, but it's really not much at all, less than I've seen with other grinders. There's a hack for this though, run the tap, put a spoon handle through it quickly, just so it gets slightly wet and then stir the beans with the spoon handle before putting them into the hopper. This greatly reduces static, I've got no idea why. And by the way, for espresso, this grinder won't go fine enough and it doesn't have the fine tuning you'd want for espresso either. But having said that, if you're using a machine with pressurized baskets, these don't require as fine a grind and I think you'd be fine using the Spark with pressurized baskets. I've read that it's loud too, but I don't really think it is. It seems about normal to me for a bird grinder. So let's have a quick look at the grinding range of the Wilfer Spark. So looking at the grinding range, this is at the most coarse. And then going finer, going into the filter range. And as you can see, it's not perfect. There are some boulders, there are some fines, 
but I think acceptable for the price point. And going into the Aeropress range, it's looking better, less in terms of fines and boulders, and the very finest, which as I said, isn't fine enough for espresso with standard baskets, but I think it'll be fine with pressurized baskets. So there you go. That's what I think of the Wilford Spark coffee grinder. In a nutshell, I think if you're wanting a grinder for manual brew methods, overall for the price, I think the Wilford Spark is fairly hard to beat. So thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe to our channel. And also to become an accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter, just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog kev. Tatty bye.